hey what's up everyone welcome back to another video in today's video we are working on 2005 lexus rx 330 and this is a complete guide how to replace brake pads on the front wheels of this vehicle so if you've never done this uh, this job before it's so easy i have break down this video to a complete step-by-step -step guide where everyone can be able to do this job easily from your home and what you do here using uh, the jack you're going to find that solid point on the ve on the front of the vehicle and jack that vehicle up in the air but before you do this make sure you break uh, those rag nuts loose and if you have a security feature which is uh, in this case a special rag nut like this one down here you need uh, that special adapter to take that lug nut out and don't worry this adapter comes in your vehicle with a spare tire a toolkit and what you do you just plug in there and you use you can use uh, the wheel spanner to get to get that lug nut out remember this is lexus and those parts they can be expensive that's why you find some of those security features like this so another tip here is when you're Putting jacks on the vehicle, make sure you put it on the rever, count those grooves to make sure that the vehicle is actually on the rever for safety features. Remember safety is always your number one. Make sure both sides, the jack stand is in the proper rever. You don't want to want your vehicle be leaning on one side. Another f uh, safety feature that you need to uh, to account on is make sure there is a chalk block on the rear tires to protect the vehicle from roaring and a, another additional safety feature apply the parking brakes and we are ready to get this job done also don't take away your jack stand leave it there make sure the weight is on the jack stands but the jack is just there is an added safety feature now once you have the tires off get in the vehicle and turn the power steering wheel that way we have the access to the rear caliper bolts and this creates enough working space and by doing this is make the work super easy we have two bolts that we need to take out one on top and one on the bottom and this is a 14 millimeter socket or a wrench to make your work super easy and uh, accessible all you need to do is make sure everything that you need for your job is very close to you and this is going to save you time so i have my new brake pads right here next to me and i'm using a ceramic brake pads and make sure you when you get the brake pads they come with the hardware sometimes you go for the cheap brake pads they don't come with the hardware uh the other thing you're gonna need you need a 14 millimeter socket or a wrench a needle pliers some anti-seize uh grease and silicone grease make sure you have a wire brush for cleaning and in my case i'm gonna need a q-tip sit uh, there stay tuned you're gonna see how i'm gonna need to use a q-tip here and it's not for cleaning so stay tuned don't go anywhere you're also gonna need uh, a type of uh, flat tip i'm gonna use a, a, a flat tip screwdriver instead and uh, let's get started So I will start off by breaking this bolt, the one on top and the one on the bottom using the 14 millimeter wrench. And what I do is just break it loose and then I drive the bolt out using the impact wrench. That's my preference in order to protect uh, the bolt from stripping using the impact wrench. Once it's loose, now i just drive it out and remember you're going counterclockwise
And now once you have those bolts out, uh, the caliper is easy to come out. Make sure you hang it somewhere safe. And it's heavy, so make sure you don't put the weight on the, uh, the brake line because that's how people break the brake line right there. So I hang it somewhere tight. I'll make sure that I'm not uh, putting any weight pressure on that uh, brake line. In my case here, I'm going to use a flat tip screwdriver here. And all you do is pry on, the, on those brake pads and they come right out. And here we go, we got the brake pads out and it doesn't look bad. It's not uh, as worn out as on the other side. And uh, one thing I'm going to share with you guys here is if you have uh, brake pads in this condition, just because they look great, it doesn't mean you don't need to change. Especially if the other side, the brake pads were really worn out, you got to change all of them. That way, they, when your pry breaks, it's evenly applied. Another thing to note, when you're taking these brake pads out, sometimes it's good to note the angle in which they are coming out because it's the same angle you're going to use when you're applying the new brake pads. And now we, let's get this uh, hardware out. And uh, the, that's where also the flat tip comes in handy now it's a clean up using the wire brush scrub all the rust out that way you're able to install the new uh, hardware and sit in place securely make sure you wipe down all those uh, dirt and dust and debris don't forget also to inspect this rubber uh, retainer down here. So if you pull it out, inspect, make sure there's no holes on it. And also make sure that it compresses in and out. Remember this is the same mechanism when you're applying the brakes. So we expand and it corrupts just like that. Another tip you, uh, I'm going to share with you here about these hardwares. Uh, if you noted, I just took one. It's always good to take one first. That way you have a reference on how they lay. Uh, how to lay it out on the on the actual caliper. Look here. It's always good also to compare because not every time these uh, hardware are going to come uh, the same. Sometimes they come in and they don't look alike and they can fit in there. And I've seen such situations. So it's always good. Take one first and then replace that one and note the orientation on how it's sitting in place and once you're successful replacing the first one then you can go ahead and do the second one and i always start with the top that way when i'm cleaning all the dirt and debris are falling down on the old one and uh, you work on the way down so this is where i'm actually going to use my q-tip is a is a brush or it's going to help me apply the silicone grease i know you are curious how i'm going to use the q-tip here so every moving uh rubbing part that is going to be moving back and forth on the brake pad you need to grease it now i'm going to show you how to install the wear indicator clip if you see the old the old brake pads right here, they have this uh, wear indicator clip, and that is a clip that actually make noise when your brakes are almost wearing out. So, and this clip goes on the corner on the brake pad that you're going to install on the inner side. So you clip it right on the corner, and it has to be firm. If it's not really firm, this is what you're going to do. What I did here is I used the needle pliers and uh, tried to clip it together to reduce that opening. 
and that's what that way when I install it on a brake pad it's going to be nice and tight remember this creep right here it's what's going to indicate to you that the vehicle need new brakes and this answers the question why when I hit the brakes I hear some squeaking sound this could be an indication that your brake pads have worn out and as you can see it's nice and firm and you only put that on one brake pad the one that goes on the inner side remember you have two brake pads one on the inner and one on the outer so the one on the inner that's where you put the and the reason for that is because the inner brake pad tends to wear more faster than the outer brake pad. And now we're just repeating the process that we did with the upper clip. Apply the silicone grease on all the rubbing areas where the brake pad will be moving back and forth. So if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't uh, been our subscriber, please take this opportunity. And uh, thank you for those who have already subscribed. Continue giving us your support and God bless you. And now after all the preparation, now we are ready to drive in the new brake pad. Remember the angle in which you took the old one out is the same angle. You put in at an angle around 45 degree angle and uh, then line it up and it's going to get in there in place without much struggle. I have done several brake pads replacements and I'm going to tell you the technique to install the brake pads on most of these vehicles is almost the same. So all you need is find that perfect angle. Last part to uh, replicate is the back of these brake pads. And what you do is apply a thin layer of the anti-seize grease. And this is going to reduce uh, the squeaking sound every time you hit the brakes. Because this is where the brake caliper or brake piston is going to be touching every time you apply the brakes. And now that we have our, our new brake pads in place, let's let me show you how to compress a brake uh, piston. As you can see, it is sticking out, and uh, that thickness is not going to be able to cover our thick new brake pads. And what you do here, I'm going to use a SIG C clamp to push the piston back in place. And as you, you, you will see, it's collapsing. And that's how you do it. Uh, there are so many techniques and tools to use to do this job right here. But this is the one that works best for me. So once the piston is back in place, now it will be able to fit in on our new brake pads. Now install the caliper back in place by aligning the those holes on the back and start the bolts by hand tightening make sure you hand tighten first before you drive with any tools once you hand tighten and it cannot move anymore then you can come in with your tool either a wrench or an impact wrench like this and don't just uh, tighten one area, just go back and forth. That way you're driving those bolts evenly. Now turn the steering wheel straight in order for us to install the wheel back on. One thing to note when you're installing your wheel, and especially the wheel rug nuts, always start with the hand tightening. And then you can come in with your tool and uh, use the star pattern. That way, when you're tightening your wheel, it's going to be tightened evenly. Once you've done uh, servicing the brakes both sides of the vehicle, you can go ahead and lower the vehicle to the ground. That way, you're able to tighten all the wheels. And then the last step here is going to be pumping the brakes. 
the first time you pump is going to be soft but with the time it's going to be harder and by doing so your vehicle now shows the brakes is good to go don't forget to take it for a road test and that's how you change your brakes on lexus rx 330 thank you for watching attach on the screen are some of my car repair videos make sure to check them out stay tuned my next video is coming up soon